everybody. My, I, we mostly have folks who we've seen before, but my name's Danny Bernstein, and um, welcome to Creative Mornings uh, in Monterey Peninsula. Uh, we started this in uh, last August to help bring together the community in a new way and in a complementary way to other community gatherings and hopefully to build bridges. And, uh, and we've been mostly in this space. And there's a milestone in this space, which you may have noticed when you come in, which is um, significant uh, amounts of alcohol. Uh, <laughs> I saw not that. part of the sound bath also. <laughs> yeah. And some people, that's, you know, that's not a milestone. That's what they're, they're trying to run away from in their life or, or, or you know, avoid. But in the case of Wave Street Studios, it's a significant milestone that we're really excited for them about because it means for, um, for Rhett and Judy and their family a more sustainable, you know, business and a bigger business and they had their uh, kind of grand opening last night with a reggae uh, event that I wasn't in, I, they didn't invite me <laughs> but it happened and I, I think it was successful and so I mean we can just give them a round of applause <laughs> gone on this journey with them and uh, it's really really exciting so excited for them Oh, actually, we have a sponsor. So I want to uh, thank uh, Gary, uh, who for the second uh, month in a row has sponsored our breakfast. <laughs> Gary is a very uh, special person, a very generous person. Uh, he's a, um, a Central Valley legend as well, which is a real thing. <laughs> I actually spent time with this man in the Central Valley. And um, he knows like the mayor, and he's, he's known. And, uh, and we're, he's really a special uh, kind of part of the tapestry of this area and a generous person. So thank you, and it's great to see you here as well. Yeah, you good, Gary. Um, okay, so this is the, this is the image. What is this? <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, this is the monthly theme? It's yeah. very different than the normal ones. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it is. Sure. It is, Cassie, right? It's a different one, yeah. Okay, so uh, Creative Mornings every month has a theme that's decided globally by a chapter, and, um, and this one is vibrancy, uh, and, and that's the picture. Um, and it's, it's different. It's Beautiful. A different picture. Yeah, it looks like Beautiful. a different kind of picture. I love the book. You like it? I love it. Yeah. Um, and so... Um, that's, 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 so we're going to have we'll have Wendy Morrow. She'll be uh, uh, introducing herself and introducing um, Wendy Edelstein as well. Um, we also have a, a fun announcement, uh, at, which is um, that uh, amazingly, July is the last uh, of my run as the host of Creative Mornings. It is a year uh, a year term. So we started in August, and July is the last one. And my original co-host um, Mike Buffo is going to be taking over. All right, Mike. Yeah. And so Mike, you know, Mike has been uh, a great friend through this process, and we've collaborated and, and refined and iterated. And he was enthusiastic to raise his hand, and uh, it's great. And so Mike, my hope is that Mike continues to build this community and, and uh, evolve it and, and consider new things, and that's great. So I'm really excited about that. And um, yeah, so without further ado, um, I'm going to introduce Wendy. It's been a wonderful process to get to know her. We've had you know, several conversations about, about this and about to kind of get to get to know each other and to hear about her journey. I think she has a really special uh, life journey that, um, that, that uh, was, is really inspirational, which is sort of there's one part of or the story, which is like how, how she got to be doing this. And, and that, I think, is a really interesting part of her journey. But then, of course, her, you know, her medium, her art, is extraordinarily unique. So I was just telling Katie that I'm doing a sound bath, and I'm speaking like a keynote speaker. And so I have to think of with both sides of my brain. So I'm like in the beta space right now, but I will quickly move into the delta, hopefully, theta state. So um, let's see. So yeah, OK. So that's me in my home sound studio, which we created, which is a bed and breakfast soon to be on the weekends. And yeah, it's a beautiful space. Um, and I'm so excited to be here because, can I just say, I watched all the videos, or most of the videos of past speakers. What an amazing group of inspiring speakers. The more I watched, I can't touch my mic, the more I watched, the less 
I mean, the more nervous I got to be here tonight because I'm like <laughs> following in these amazing footsteps. So kudos to Danny and for all of you showing up. I'm not a morning person, but I will come here from now on. Now I've said it out loud, so what you say you have to manifest, right? And I was especially excited to speak here today because vibrancy is such a great topic. And just the serendipity uh, that I was happened to be here today because vibrancy also means vibrations. So you know, you meet people that are vibrant and they also usually have a high vibration. You go to lands that for some reason just feel sacred because of the experiences that that land has had. So you go to Esalen and the last thing you want to do is sit in a room and watch PowerPoint, right? You want to be with the nature of the trees. You want to feel the earth. So there's vibrations in everything. Everything has energy. And so what we'll get into, there's a lot of research being done right now. Sound baths are trending. When I started this 10 or 12 years ago, no one even knew what a sound bath was. I didn't know what a sound bath was until I went to one. So we're going to get into that. So just so you know the structure for today, I'm going to speak for about 10 or 12 minutes, maybe 15 at the most. Um, feel free to interject if you have qu any questions. And then I know you're sitting up, but we're going to do at least a 15 or 20 minute sound bath where I'll guide you on a meditation. You'll hear beautiful instruments. And then I'm here for questions. We have you know, a few minutes for questions. So, so that was me. See, I could probably still do that. Um, I grew up in New York and New Jersey. Um, my parents were divorced, so I slept on my dad's couch and went to dance classes on the weekends. And during the week, I danced all over wherever I could, performed, choreographed. Um, made my way into a dance scholarship, undergraduate in college, and then my dad bet I could not get into Stanford for a master's program, and I did, so he had to pay. And I flew myself out to California and started my life here dancing. Classes were just sort of an annoying thing in the way, although I did love um, anatomy and physiology and all that stuff. So, and I choreographed all this plays at Stanford too. So then, it was time to graduate. And everyone around me, because you know, now you're at Stanford and all these really, really smart, brilliant people are like, I'm going to be a lawyer, I'm going to be a doctor, I'm going to be a businessman, I'm going to be. What am I going to be? What am I going to be? I didn't know dancing could be like, I had sort of been already dancing, like I wanted to do something else. So I, I thought I had to get big shoulder pads and find a <laughs> nine to five job. And you know, so that's exactly what I did. I did, I sold financial services, which was really not a fit. I wrote for City Sports Magazine, which was great, but I wasn't really that great a writer at the time. I am a much better writer now. Um, and then I got a job at a PR firm. And there were a lot of other young people. It was very vibrant. And this was, and I'm going to repeat this twice, this was pre-internet. This was pre-internet. So it was really fun because we talked to people and we had events and a lot of people came and it was fabulous. Then I had a baby and like Diane Keaton, I still continued to work in my suits. And um, I started a business, um, my own firm. It was called Focal Point Communications. And I focused on a very specific area where I worked for CEOs and their direct reports of Fortune 500 companies and decided where they would speak at conferences globally, what they would say, what was the landscape out there, what was the conversation, who they would be speaking with. It was a great thing. It was great for a few decades. I'm quite older than I look, I hope. But these were some of my clients. Um, Ursula Burns, she was the first black female CEO on the Fortune 500 list. Brilliant woman. Um, John Chambers, who was a lot of fun at Cisco, and all of his direct reports were great. We worked with Adobe. PayPal, eBay, I mean, we were, we had a lot of startups. I went through the whole dot-com thing. We even had RuPaul, yeah, and uh, that was WebEx, so I launched WebEx, and he used, had that tagline, meetings used to be such a drag, and we had him at an event, and it was all great. Okay, so fast forward a few decades, and I'm looking like this. It's too much email. It's 100 emails a day. I'm constantly at the computer. I'm constantly, and then COVID hit, I'm constantly on Zoom. And there's a moment when you know your heart's not in it anymore and that it's time for a change. I hurt my neck. I was just not who I was. I wasn't dancing. Um, at, by that time, we had moved to Carmel. Um, Sean had suggested I start and say how I got into sound bowls and how I got into all this. and. Um, I was at a yoga retreat, or just even not a retreat, a workshop, because who had time for a retreat in Silicon Valley? And some 
woman, her name was Lydia Wang, she became my teacher, was playing a lot of these exact same instruments, and it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever heard. I mean, the sound, and I sat up, I'm supposed to be laying down and resting, I sat up and I just stared at her. And she's thinking, who is this blonde lady staring at me? And then two weeks later, we ended up actually traveling together, and she was my roommate. It was all, she, we traveled in the same car, and that was it. I just went to as many events of hers as I could. She taught me the monochord. I finally got these chimes this summer because they're very expensive and they're very beautiful. So all these instruments are based on her lineage. And I started meditating. I did transcendental meditation, and it just continued and continued. And so I have to tell you, what is a sound bath? Because some of you may not even know. So this baby's going to explain it. Sorry, it's a little loud. <laughs> so that's kind of how I felt, working. <laughs> and then I would play the bowls, and I would feel like that. <laughs> I had amazing teachers. That's my beautiful husband right there. He's back there, helped me carry all my stuff with my bad knee. This is a Brahma Rishi we met at a Silicon Valley event. And we said, will you be our teacher? And so he took us on this path to enlightenment, which included you know, a lot of teaching, a lot of spiritual things. We did, we did meditation like gatherings together. He said, you can play these instruments, and you will play these instruments. His message to me, which I'll share with you, is that you can do so much more than you think you can do. And he proved that by fasting for 10 days straight without even water, and we would see that. It was amazing. Lyndall Demier is another teacher of mine that I met in Carmel. I think many of you may know her. She was an angel, um, and we would meditate, and she would literally be in the light. Objects in the room would disappear, and I thought I was hallucinating or someone slipped something into my water bottle. Um, and as I got to know her over the years, she, we would go into this meditation, and it would be light everywhere in the room. And she, I would, then I would talk, because that's what I do. And as soon as I would talk, the light would go away. And so she said to me, as soon as you can talk and be in this light, then you know you're a healer. And I thought, well, that would never happen. But two years later, 45 minutes, we're talking in the light. And I've been doing a lot of sound baths by then. So anything can happen. Of course, there are a lot of teachers, right? This is Lydia, beautiful Lydia. She played with her teacher, Wolfgang, who made these chimes for us in Carmel last summer. Calden Ko is a Tibetan monk who is actually in Santa Cruz, and you can go hear his beautiful sound baths every Saturday at 5 o'clock. He's also at the Yoga Shala. He's been a wonderful teacher for both Wendy and I, getting us together, learning new things. Um, one of my favorite teachers is actually this tree in my yard. When we cut down a branch, I was heartbroken by that. And I went out the next day, and there was a heart in the carving. So I called the tree company, and I said, oh, you guys, that's so nice of you to do this heart. And they didn't know what I was talking about. They just <laughs> uh, wanted the. And so as time passed, then I saw this image. It was like a Mary Mother. There's Lao Tzu. Last Mother's Day, my sister-in-law found an eye. You can't see it in this photo, but if you come to my house, I'm happy to show you. There's literally a beautifully carved eye, an elephant. So this, I visit this tree daily. It's my inspiration. And of course, it's right outside my sound studio. So we love that. So that's sort of my sound journey, if you will. Um, now I play everywhere. I play in my backyard when it's a full moon. I played for free during COVID. That was how I started. I play at the beautiful Yoga Shala. There are sound offerings there almost weekly or bi-weekly, not just me. Um, Adele does sound bass. It's on the travel. Like sound has trending, and I think it's because there's an election year. There's wars going on. And we also are starting, once you do a sound bath and you feel the vibrations, which you will, you'll understand how healing it is for you, not just mentally, but physically. So I'm at CVAC, I'm at Hacienda Carmel Valley, June 26th, there's multiple healers. Wendy will be there with me singing, beautiful. Um, Calden will be there. So this is actually at the Yoga Shala. I want to just tell you a minute, take a minute and share with you about my instruments because they're like my friends, they're my family. All my bowls have names. This monochord is, to me, sounds like angels. These chimes are each created in a single note. So it's F and C mainly, but there's also a D and a G. And Wendy and I have a lot of fun playing with these and singing with them. The resonance on these chimes go longer than any other instrument made right now. So I can tap them. 
when I, we first got them, I put them in our bedroom, and I would play them. And then I'd run into bed and like try and fall asleep before the resonance ran out. That was a lot of fun. Um, now they're in my sound studio. Obviously, most of you know the gong. These Tibetan bowls, I choose to use instruments that are more grounded. I do wood. I do metal. Um, obviously, I have a Native American flute. That's something I'm still training. I never stopped learning. I never stopped training. I never stopped playing. I do a monthly monochord meeting. Uh, most of my instruments are from a, a company called We Play Well Together. So they um, orchestrate, if you will. I choreograph my sound bass. I create, I curate which instruments I'll play. These are not all my instruments. I have more based on the audience. So hopefully today I've done that for you. There's so much science now on this. It's amazing. And I could geek out on this. I have a master's from Stanford, but I'm not going to. But you can look it up. But I do want to show you this 10 second video. So this is from Stanford, I'm a little biased. <laughs> and these are cardiologists that did this experiment. And it's showing that acoustics can create a form that resembles natural cardiac tissue. And look at the shapes it went through. And they're reconstructing organ tissue like this. There's also been a lot of research done on the gong, which is why I got the gong about its impact on T cells and cancer. So they've had huge gong baths at cancer centers. I know throughout Europe where Wolfgang, who makes this, there's hotels that are just doing sound bath experiences now. So before everyone goes to their room at night, they have sound rooms. There's um, spas in New York. Jordan was telling me that she went and had, a, instead of getting a massage, she had a sound massage. So this is becoming a real thing. But who cares about what I say? These are testimonials. So people share with me their experiences, which is so special to me. I had, I told Sean the story. I had, there was a woman that came to the yoga shala around Christmas, and it was a wonderful sound bath. We had candle lights and everything, and they were from Kansas City, and it was wonderful. And, you know, a year later, not, I think it was six months later, it was summer, and crazy storm, and there was just a few people there, and those same couple walked in. And she said, the last time I was here was the first night I had slept after your sound bath in like a year because my husband had been diagnosed with cancer. And she said, then we went out and got sound bowls and we came back from Kansas to California because you were here. And I was like, how do I do a sound bath after that? I'm like, oh, this is very much. So it's powerful. It'll affect you in different ways. Now, I'm only going to have 20 minutes today, but we'll see. We'll see if there's a, if there's a shift. <clears throat> The last thing I want to talk about uh, before we start the sound bath is the community that I've been able to embrace here and that, have, have, that has embraced me. I mean, just the fact that there's so many people in this room and this Creative Mornings community is really spectacular. Um, gong master Wayne Marto travels up and down the coast, and I got to do a sound bath with him at Hacienda. I've had astrologists like Anna doing things together. Um, this is my, one of my favorites. Um, Jordan and I played music while this brilliant massage therapist, Ashley and Camille, set up this cabana in my yard so people got massages while we did sound. It was really great. I've done retreats with Brooke and Karen, so we've expanded this to day-long things here in Carmel at different beautiful venues. And if no one has any questions, I think it's time to begin the sound bath. And just sort of drop in. Take a deep breath. Hold it. And release it like you have all the time in the world. Relax your shoulders. Relax the little muscles around your eyes. Now imagine there's a curtain in front of you, any color you like. And on this curtain is a little sign that has the word ease on it. And you're going to walk through this curtain, and immediately you're going to feel a sense of ease. You're going to I invite you to just think of your life as very simple, if not 
for the rest of the day, but just right now, your only task is to rest and breathe. Rest is medicine. And you can stay here, or I invite you to enter through another curtain. And on this curtain is a little sign that says, Peace. And as you hear the resonance, the beautiful strength and resonance of these chimes, and if you like to enter through this curtain. And when you enter through this curtain, actually sit down and feel the weight of your body and the weight and the strength of the earth holding you. And now your hands and your feet are relaxed. And as your extremities relax, the in internal organs of your body relax as well. And as Calvin says, this is inner world music. Heart rate slowing. Something I learned at a sacred women's circle with Katie Park a few weeks ago. Native American ancient shamans. When people would go to them with illness or depression, they would ask four questions. The first question was, when was the last time you sang? The second question was, when was the last time you danced? When was the last time you listened wholeheartedly or told a story from beginning to end? And the last question. When was the last time you had the courage to be still?
the speaking portion of the sound bath will come to a conclusion now, but I wanted to also share with you what I learned is that the shamans also use things like rain sticks and ocean drums to help you release thoughts, feelings, emotions, and obstacles that might no longer serve you.
Release God. 
music part of the sound bath has ended but your vibrations will continue <laughs> and as you're coming back into the room slowly very peacefully very easily I'll share with you a little vibrancy thing I wrote this is just a segue to help you come back into the room what if I could wash away the wrinkles of time yet keep all the wisdom and the beauty. Erase the muscle aches, the slower pace, and instead accept and relish in the peacefulness of slowing down. Release the busyness to reaching the achieving and replace it with the knowing and the calmness of an open heart. I hear the messages and I see the signs, but I'm listening with my soul and seeing with my heart. I have been around the world and around the block, and I am home. My home is the present moment. The vibrancy and the magic of the present moment that it does not require anything. There is no rush to get there, no outfit that must be adorned, no expectations, only the courage to be still, to feel, to listen, and to love. And before you open your eyes, if you haven't yet, let's go through one more curtain, whatever color you like it to be. And on this curtain, the sign says vibrancy. How do you want to enter the rest of your day vibrantly, bravely, courageously, with peace in your body, mind, and heart? I want to thank Wendy, the angel that was singing next to me. She is part of a beautiful community here that just brings me joy. I cry when she sings, literally. I cry when she sings. <laughs> so beautiful. So thank you so much. And thank you all. And I'm here if you have any questions or want to play with any of these instruments. <coughs> Or just say exactly where you are. So you produce uh, sound baths for people, but as you're producing it, how does that make you feel? One vibrant. <laughs> so you get this, you have to be active. I love it. I usually walk around the room frequently. So my knee was a bit of a problem. Um, I had a knee injury, but I usually walk around with the bowl, as Anna knows, she's been to many of my sound baths, so that people can feel the vibrations from afar and they feel it up close. So I also do one-on-one -on -one sound baths where you're on a table and bowls are all around you and underneath you. It's the, the vibrations that are really healing. Me striking the bowl is just a means to an end. The end is the vibrations that you feel. So that giving feeds you too. Oh, it feeds me so much. I could literally do this all day if people would show up. Or I, I travel, as my husband knows, there's always a bowl in my suitcase. Whenever I feel ill or unease, I go to a bowl, even if it's just a minute. It's the best gift I've ever given myself. So in going through this sound bath, the, the hardest thing for me is to get the Mike, thought. Leave in you. The hardest thing for me in doing, listening to your sound bath and also meditating is getting rid of the thoughts. Stop analyzing. I was, I was 30 years in Silicon Valley. So. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> so you, you get that, that. That's, I know it's a choir, but any hints about doing that? Well, for me, um, just personally, I'll take one of my favorite bowls. I, I didn't bring my oldest bowl, but I have a lot of thoughts. I'm very busy brain, and I'm very 
physically I'm like a hummingbird. I'm always active. So the bowl and the sound bath enables me to calm. It down regulates my nervous system like a breath work session would. So when I have thoughts, I tap the bowl. I bring it to my third eye. And then I think of nothing but the sound coming through the bowl. So, and then when the sound ends, the thoughts come back and I tap it again. And that's how I started meditating. David, that's going to be very helpful. People don't Oh, so while we're waiting, if anyone has any further questions, as I was in, in speaker training, I always said to my speakers, always leave your audience with three key takeaways. And of course, I forgot that slide, but Danny gave me a pen and I wrote it down. Um, so my three takeaways are rest is medicine. You are medicine. We just are so busy going task to task, thing to thing, we forget to rest, myself included. And oftentimes I'll just, it's three or four o'clock and I realize I haven't really taken a moment and I'll just take a moment, I'll stretch, I'll go with my bowls. So rest is medicine, you are medicine. The second thing, and I learned this from the Stanford Design School is, and I, I think this is clear in my presentation, what do you want to be when you grow up is a question that should no longer exist. It should be reframed to what do I want to grow into next? Mm -hmm. So you can see I've had a lot of different careers. I'm not sure what's going to come next, but I'm excited for that. Uh, my friend, his mom, he's 86, and he told me, even after I've known him for two years, he said my mom would sit up in the morning and say, I wonder what good thing is going to happen to me today. Mm -hmm. I thought that was the best thing. And the third thing I don't have, because I want you to come away with what your third takeaway is based on the sound bath and what you feel and what you've learned. Hopefully that one thing is that your body can go into a state of peace, whether you have a sound bath or not, just with a breath. We're all vibrations. And I, again, really appreciate Wendy for being here, adding that beautiful voice and joy. And thank you all for being here this morning. And I'm here if anyone has any questions. I see Danny on the side. Perhaps it's time is up. Are there any more questions? Yes. Oh, I loved the sound of the rain stick. And I wondered if you can tell me more about it, the art on the outside, what's inside, and how it's used wherever it comes from. Um, you know, I got that. I got this at a consignment shop, but I've always wanted a rain stick. And the company that makes this also makes a lot of beautiful gongs. And I just love the artwork on it. Um, um, they're used, as I said in the beginning, like a baby, when you give the baby a rattle, it's to quiet them. Like that sound, according to you know, Native Americans, actually clears the mind. So that's what rain sticks do. And especially when I'm playing it for others, I hold it right up to my head and and the ocean drum which sounds similar does the same thing and those are not difficult to play and um, yet they're very effective so if I'm playing somewhere like a busy place like Carmel Valley Athletic Club where I could feel the wrestling of the audience you all were settled and beautiful I could play whatever I wanted but I will play the rain stick and I'll play the drum early on and the gong so that they, people can drop in more easily oh Hi. Um, I was just wondering how, um, if we wanted to begin acquiring some of the brass tools, what do you recommend in terms of like, the frequency of how do you begin? That's a great question. Um, when Conway of Asia went out of business, I was in there for about three hours picking a bowl. <laughs> the lady thought it was crazy. So it's really what resonates with your heart. Um, I tend to go towards the lower bowls. But yet this was my first baby bowl, and I still love it. And the more you play the bowl, this was told to me by the, the man that literally hand makes these chimes because his son is deaf and he can only hear vibrations. So his hearing is so pure. Um, the more you play the bowl, so if you get it and you're not quite sure, um, the better the bowl will become. So just play it every day. And I hope to start selling these bowls. I do have a, a contact um, that his family makes them in Nepal. So I have my cards up top. So yeah, I, I wouldn't just go online. There's also a store in Monterey by the coffee shop. He also sells bowls. So you'll know when the bowl will come to you. Hi. Um, I was wondering, is there any specific sound that 
you play or any specific instrument if, some, if someone is um, experiencing physical pain? Oh, that's a great question. Well, this brings me peace. Sometimes when I'm playing this during the sound bath, I literally like start almost falling asleep because <laughs> to me, I hear the earth angels. And I play this well, but there's people that play this and have bigger ones and three of them. This is called a monochord and it's just the F note minus F and C. So the F is the heart chakra and then the C is the root chakra. So that's my healing for mental. Um, when I injured my neck, this is kind of funny, but I would take a bowl and a soft mallet like this to get the vibrations. I don't know if you can see me, so I'll stand up. I keep getting tangled in that mic. Um, and I would, I'm kind of flexible, so I would go like this. And put it in my mind. And then I had this knee injury, so I have a big giant bowl at home. I couldn't bring everything, honestly. I have five more bowls than this. And I would sit and I would put the bowl on my knee and I would put bowls around it and breathe. And I think even Mark Angel told me, you know, you heal it, send healing love to it. So you have energy in your body, in your hands. So when you put your hand on your injured part, it does. I've been sleeping with my hand on my knee because I know I'm a Reiki trained also, so I know. So and here I am with that crutches so far. So um, we'll see. Um, but does that answer your question? So these are the most healing to me, but it really it's individual. Anything that vibrates, when you play the guitar, or you play a musical instrument yourself, you are also receiving healing. That's why we like to go hear live music, right? Great, well thank you so much. Thank Wendy. you all so much. They can, I have a book if you want to get on my email list because I'm not the best at marketing, even though that was my former career. It's being passed around. Oh, it's being passed around. So you can just write your phone number or email, however you want to be communicated to or with, and I will do my best to update. I am also on Instagram, Carmel Sound Healing, so I do sometimes post when I have pop-ups. And I'm at the Yoga Shala almost consistently. And um, if you haven't been to the Yoga Shala, it's a beautiful place in Carmel to go to. Well, thank you so much. I don't want to speak too much to kind of disrupt what we're doing right now. We'll send in this our prep session because even though we were just talking about this, it like sort of our prep sessions were soothing. So I might just like you can still call me. Call you and say, hey, you know, that's what we really talk about. But it was a lot of fun to work on this one. And I'm glad that we had the circumstance change that so you were had, you, you took the whole session. It would have been hard to fit in 10 minutes. This yeah. is <laughs> absolutely a better arrangement. So thanks again, both of you, for coming. And um, yeah. Let, can we just give a round of applause for Wendy? We'll see you next month and stay tuned for more information. I think next month is going to be a little bit of a difference in terms of thematically. I think we're going to focus a little more on the local economy. And in my work lately, I've been able to meet a lot of extraordinary people who are very deep on what's really going on in Monterey County. Uh, what are the challenges? What are the uh, you know, socioeconomic challenges? What are the trends? What's happening in education? What's happening in uh, our minority communities? Uh, well, actually, we're 61% Hispanic, so uh, Caucasian would be <laughs> What's happening in our Hispanic community? What's happening in our African American community? We're going to focus a little more on, on, the, on the community side of the Monterey Peninsula, which we, which we just haven't done. We haven't done anything remotely like that, so it will be different. And there are a couple people that I'm hoping to bring in uh, to do that, so it'll be a more of a, you know, a little bit more of a that kind of feel. But I think it'll be really great and really different. And so um, that's the idea. So everyone have a great rest of your month, and we'll see you in June.